Hello, everyone. It's now noon, so I think we'll get started. Um, SHI is going to be hosting a lecture series on Raven as a trickster and culture hero this month, featuring Clinkett and Simshian storytellers. And we will end the series with an academic review of Raven stories by a scholar of Northwest Coast culture and history. And trickster figures are found in the oral traditions throughout North America and elsewhere in the world. Among the indigenous populations of North America, he typically takes the form of a raven or a coyote, though there's also the hare and the spider and others. In Alaska, he is raven. And here in Southeast Alaska, he is especially prominent as segments of the Tlingit, Haida, and Simshian people identify themselves through their crest imagery and clan and moiety affiliations with, uh, with Raven. Today, we will be featuring storytelling by Johan Echohawk Atkinson. He is Tsimshian of the Wolf Clan from Metlakatla. And today, he will be telling the story of Raven and the Tide Woman. And all these lectures will be held in person at noon here at the Walter Soboloff Building in Juneau. And we'll also live stream them on YouTube and save them to the SHI channel there so you can view them after. And I just have two brief housekeeping items. Um, the SHI store has a section on Raven items, if anyone's interested to go look at those. And we've pulled a few items from the SHI collection, which are featured over here, that display imagery of Raven um, in various forms and media. So, Computer shoot can ah goodness cheese ha in he satiye. Thank you for coming here, those of you who've come in person today and those joining us online seated in front of your computers. And now I will hand it over to Johan. Neat, Delawan, Johan, Echohawk, Atkinson, DYU, Lachibu, Diptegu, Tutkitkahaki, Pawnee Nation, Mescatla, Alaska, Dibulwatku. Hello, how are you? Luam Godu, Luam Godu, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Johan Echohawk Atkinson. I'm of the Wolf Clan of the Simshian Nation. I'm of the Kitkahaki Band of the Pawnee Nation. I'm, I live in Metlakatla, Alaska. Adika Halerakohawk. Adida Eldon Atkinson. My mother's name is Hilaire Kohawk of the Kitkahaki Band. My father's name is Eldon Atkinson of the Raven Clan, Gunhutta. I am honored to be able to be here and share a part of my culture, a part of the Simshian stories that we tell in our village. And everyone of all ages hear these stories. Hear our traditional Simshian stories and our stories of Raven. Because our Simshian stories have always connected us. Our Simshian stories, since the beginning of time, have brought our families together. Our stories 
have taught our young ones how to listen. Our stories teach our young people and our adults on how to give lessons. And that patience that we need to bring back today, and we are doing a great job with it through our culture, is taught through our stories. Our traditional stories that we have always told for over 10,000 years are still being taught and told today. So the story that you are going to hear and the story that is going to be shared with our viewers online is going to be the same story that our great, 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 great ancestors have heard. So I want us to do our best to visualize on how it was back then. Because our traditional stories, whether they are of Raven, of Tansom, whether they are of the Chief Kingfisher, whether they are of Tide Woman, these stories, they bring us back in time. And before this time now, our values for 10,000 plus years and our lessons were taught and they were strong and we were healthy in the mind, body, and spirit. And our stories played a big part in that. We didn't write nothing down. You see, the story of Raven and Tide Woman was passed down from generation of generation of a setting just like this. Listening having patience and connecting, and most importantly, learning together. When I first started listening to stories, we have, some, we have many great storytellers in my village in Matlakatla. My WEC, Tim Lannan, he told me, when we tell our stories, we have to tell them like they just happened yesterday. We have to tell them like this just happened and you are running to tell someone. Tired woman, just let, just let the tired go for the first time. We have to show that emotion. Bring us back. Because that's what our stories do as well. They allow us to show our emotion. And that's why I love seeing young people tell these stories. Because it's a roller coaster of emotion, our traditional stories. There's conflict, there's anger, there's joy, there's happiness, there's sadness. And there's a way to, there's always a way to solve your problem. And us, as young people and adults and elders, we need to show and express that emotion. And storytelling is a great way to do that. I love storytelling because it keeps me young. It motivates me to dye my hair. And I love being able to talk with the young people and then have them tell me. I want to be able to tell the story with more energy. And that's a beautiful thing. Because that is what we have always done. That's how these stories have been able to keep alive and pass down for 10,000 plus years. So whenever you learn a story, I want to challenge everyone to tell it. And whoever you're telling it to, tell them. I want you to tell the story, but tell it better than I could ever tell it. The oral tradition that we've had for thousands and thousands and thousands of years still will remain strong if we all continue to tell these stories. Because every single one of us, everyone in this room, in this clan house, everyone viewing online is a storyteller. You have a great story to tell. I love it that we documented, our, we have told Raven stories for so long because we have been able to learn so much from Raven, inspired from how this world today, how it is today, 
from the actions of Raven. And I love that we could continue on these stories of his story. And I want it to motivate us to share our story. Because every single one of us is a storyteller. Every single one of us has an amazing story. Make it the best story. Make this chapter in that story one of the best. And then the next one. So the story, Raven and Tide Woman. When I first learned the story, there is a totem pole in my village that tells this story. And it was carved by Gibal Lacha and his family. And there's a plaque on it. And this was one of the first stories I've ever read. I walked up to it with the young people in my family, and I read it. And it was the first Simshan story. And the fact that I learned the story with young ones was so motivating for me. It was like, I thought, I want to learn more. Because when I was reading out loud long ago, the young people around us, the young people in, in your circle, will listen. Something about those words. Long ago. Let me tell you the story of Raven. Let me tell you the story of Raven and Tide Woman. There's power behind that. It's the strength of our ancestors and the strength of this land because it's the, the story of Raven and Tide Woman have come from this land, have come from the coastline. And has been told amongst the Simpsian, Haida, and Clinton thousands of years. So when you're telling the story, you're telling a piece of history, you're telling a story that has been told for thousands of generations, that has brought people together, has taught values, and connected. Connected us. And that connection is so powerful. That connection is what we need to do. So the story, Raven and Tide Woman. Long ago, the world was very different than how we see it today. The changes that we see today, many of them were because of Raven. And the ocean that we are so blessed to be by and see every single day was very different. As we know, the tide goes out twice a day. But long ago, the tide never went out because it was a lady named Tide Woman. And Tide Woman, she held the tide closely. And she rarely let the tide go. She loved the tide. She loved, she'd wrap it around her arms and she'd wear it on her back. She, she's never going to let the tide go. Every great once in a while, the tide goes out, but she pulls it back up. And this is how it was back then. This is how life was. This is what everybody accepted. Except or Raven. Raven, as we know, he has a way with words. Raven, the trickster. Raven loves getting his way. Raven, magical. When Raven is not Raven, in my Simpsian heritage, he is Tamsin. It's magical being with superpowers. I like to tell the little kids, the little kindergarten first graders, Tamsum, Raven is a Simpsian superhero. And when Tamsum puts on his feathered cloak, he turns into Raven. And Raven was flying around the world one day. Over the coastline, it was high tide, because it's high tide every day back then. And Raven was looking for his breakfast. And he was scouting the, 
scouting the tide line, the bushes, looking for berries, looking to see what the other animals are hunting. But it was a time when harvesting and hunting was scarce. Raven couldn't find a berry if his life depended on it. He was looking all over, and he was hungry. He noticed all the other animals were also hungry. And finally, after looking for hours and hours and hours, Raven found a huckleberry. It wasn't even a salmonberry. It was a little huckleberry. And he ate it. He's like, oh, that's so good. I want more. But there was no more. Raven didn't like that. He didn't like that one bit. We took to the sky, flying around, looking at the coastline, seeing where his next meal was going to come from. And he seen sea lion pop his head out of the ocean. And he had a giant, juicy octopus that he was chowing on. Almost looking at Raven, pops back down. And Raven said, oh, that looks so good. And then he sees Mink from swimming out of the water. He had a giant cockle in his mouth, bigger than his head. He could barely hang on to it. And he went scurried in the bushes. And Raven says, how did he get that? I want a cockle. Man, that looks good. And he's flying. Now he's really hungry. His stomach is, is grumbling. and it's, a, it's so hungry. He's flying around. And Raven's starting to get really frustrated. And his breaking point was, I'll tell you when Raven's breaking point was. He's seen otter. Floating on his back. He had two abalone with gumboots in the middle. Seaweed wrapped around like a, like a traditional seafood sandwich. And he was eating it. And Raven, just seeing him having this sandwich and his beak just drop, he's like, that looks so good. I want abalone. I want a gumboot sandwich. So he's like, that's it. I can't take it no more. And he says, where is Tide Woman? Now he's really flapping his wings, looking for Tide Woman. Because he knew that Tide Woman kept the tide right here. And all the food that we eat today, the gumboots, the seaweed, the gooey duck, the clams, the cockles, the seaweed, the crab, it's just was out of reach. And he sees Tide Woman. So he flies down as fast as he can, jumps in front of her. It's Tide Woman. And he's thinking, OK, I really got to think about my words here. Tide woman, can you please let the tide go? And she goes, no, how could you ask me that? And she pulls the tide higher, and it comes up to ankles, his raven's ankles, and she, he jumps back. And then raven goes, hmm. let me ask again. Tide woman, can you please let the tide go? Tide woman said, you just asked me that. I, I said, no. And she held the tide even tighter. And Raven asked her for the third time. As Tide Woman was walking away, Raven jumped up, flew in front of her, got in front of her and said, Tide Woman, can you please let the tide go? I'm so hungry. Please. Tide Woman says, no. This time is where it shall remain. It's where it belongs. It has always been right here. Nothing you say, Raven, will change that. She really wrapped it around her. She put a clove hitch, tied it around her shoulder, and 
she walked on. And the tide was just as high. She made it. She's thinking, hmm. I really want a gumboot sandwich. Hmm. Sea lion popped up. He was eating his last octopus leg. Went back down. He goes, man, I'm going to have to chicken. We all know Raven. He's a master at chicken. Hmm. I know. I'm going to let her see that I feasted on all all these delicious seafoods that we could get out in low time. That'll do it. So he goes and he drinks as much water from a lake as he possibly can. And his tummy is really big. Look like he's in his third trimester. And he's walking. <laughs> and he's walling up to Tide Woman. And just within ear distance, he goes, Oh, man. Those clams sure were good. Oh, man, my stomach is filled with them. Tide woman, she heard, she goes, what did he say? Did he say clams? How did he get clams? And then Raven, seeing that, she was paying attention. And he says, oh, man, I had, like, 14 Dungeness crabs. That was so good. I'm so full. Oh, I don't know if I could fly. And Tide Woman said, what? How did Raven get all these foods when the tide is high? Raven was really trying to sell it. Like, oh, man, you ever have a double gumboot sandwich? I sure did. It was so good. And Tide Woman, she walked over to Raven. And Raven knew that he had to get Tide Woman close. She walked over. She goes, what did you say, Raven? She goes, yeah. Those gumboots. The clams and cockles. Mm, mm. Oh, that was so, look at my tummy filled with seafood. And Tide Woman, she goes, Looking in at Raven, she got closer. How is that possible? I have the tide right here. And when she got closer, Raven grabbed mud and dirt and rock, and he threw it in her eyes, blinding her. She wasn't able to see. Permanently lost her vision. And she was screaming, ah! Trickster, you got me, Raven! And she was in pain and she was scared that she wasn't able to see. Raven wobbled over to the big giant tummy. It's like, oh, that looks like it hurts, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, Tide Woman. I'll make you a deal. If you let the tide go, I'll use my powers to fix your vision. You will be able to see again. You will be able to see this beautiful world. Tide woman, mm -mm. she didn't want to let the tide go. She was still holding her eyes. She wasn't able to see. And she goes, Raven, Raven, how, how could you have done that? Oh, Raven, I can't see, Raven. And she held the tide even tighter. Raven started to really plead with her. Hi, Mom. I'm sorry. I want you to have your vision back. Tell you what. I will restore your vision with my powers right now if you let the tide go. Every day. And she could, she could see that tide woman considering. She's like, mm, my eyes, they hurt so bad. And Raven asked again, 
Let the tide go every day. He said under his breath, so I can eat some breakfast. No, dinner too. Let the tide go twice a day. <laughs> tide woman. She goes, okay, okay. Deal. Fix my vision, Raven. And I'll let the tide go twice a day. Raven went over to Tide Woman. And Raven had magical powers. Raven, who released the sun and the moon and the stars who could transform, went over to Tide Woman, restored her vision. She opened up her eyes. She seen Raven. And Raven had a little smirk on his face because he knew he tricked her. He knew. He did exactly what he needed to do to get his name today. Raven the Trickster. And Tide Woman, she knew what she had to do, but she didn't want to. And Raven, he was still surviving off that one huckleberry 24 hours ago. He was hungry. He was saying, OK, Tide Woman, I fixed your vision. Let the tide go. Tide Woman. She took the clove hitch so tied off her arm. And she let the tide go. And it was a minus 4.2. <laughs> All the crabgrass was exposed. Clams and cockles were squirting up out of the ground. The pink rock was covered with abalone. So much seafood. The seal and the sea lion were far away now, looking, saying, what? How come the tide's out? Raven walked over to the biggest octopus hole. He had a little makeshift knife and a fork that he had out of alder. He couldn't waste. And he feasted. And he feasted. And all the animals. They came down, and they feasted. And Tide Woman says, she was up by the tree line. She goes, the tide is out. Raven was down by the tide line, far away, minus 4.2. That's like over 150 feet. And the table is set. And he had all these abalone, and he had his gumboot sandwich. <laughs> and he was so happy eating. And all the other birds came down, all the other critters of the world. Twice a day. Tell this day right now. Twice a day. The tide goes out. Comes back in. And I've heard that saying. In every village I went to, when the tide is out, the table is set. We just had some big minus tides. And in my village in Malakatla, everybody came home with octopus and cockles and crabs and abalone. And when we're down by the beach, next time you're down by the beach at low tide, think about the story. Raven and Tide Woman. Next time you see a raven, I've never seen so many ravens in my life here in Juneau. Holy cow. Think about Raven and Tide Woman. Think about the story. Tell yourself the story. Tell people in your family the story. One of my mentors told me, when he first started telling stories, he sat down next to a stream. And he told the first story he learned to the stream. Because he had to practice being louder than the stream. There's so many opportunities and places that we could tell the story, tell the story to. And that. Because it connects us. These stories connect us. 
There's many lessons that we could learn from the story of Raven and Tide Woman. And these lessons have always been taught for 10,000 plus years. And that's amazing that the story survived before contact, before colonization. We were telling the story. And we get to continue to share the story, that oral tradition that we have as indigenous people of this land still continues on. And that responsibility is on me, and it's on you all, and it's on to every single person watching. Have to keep these traditions alive. Because I guarantee you, telling a story to the young person in your family, they will learn more than they will ever learn from a phone or a device. Let me tell you a story of Raven and Tide Woman. Next time you're at the beach with them, tell the story of Raven and Tide Woman. And I said that these stories, before I, before I told the story, it's the story keeps us young. I love getting animated. Long ago, Raven had a double gumboot sandwich. I'm 40 something years old. I'm talking about a gumboot sandwich. <laughs> Keeps me young. These stories keep me healthy. These stories can keep you healthy. They have always done this, and they will continue to. But we must tell them. These stories need to be said, they need to be heard, and they need to be taught. So that is the story of Raven and Tide Woman. Go ahead, Krizo. Thank you very much, Johan. Now, we can entertain some questions from people here in attendance and online if we get any. Does anyone have a question or a comment? Okay, here's one. Oh, I wa Lu M Goldu uh the needs an ada naknoon uh a dao Lu M Goldu uh Lu Go No go uh a dao doicism. Oh doicism. Oh, uh, thank you, Johan. Uh, when, I, when you were telling your story, we grew up in the same place, and I had vivid memories of the places where we went to get gumboots, abalone, hatzel, uh, octopus, uh, and crab. And so uh, living far away from I got up. It was good for my goat. Do I exit noon? I feel like it. It lends a lot more weight because you you've lived these things as well as know these adau that you're sharing with us today. Oh. Do I exit noon? Is there a question over here? Doixism, Johan. Could you um, explain your traditional garb and the meanings? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for asking that. And thank you all, Doixism, Dorachik Stehu, for your words and the questions. Um, I wear a tunic that has my family's crest. My mother is of the Pawnee Nation. I come from the Echo Hawk family. My great grandfather. My great-great-grandfather, he had one name. His name was Echohawk. No first name, no last name. And he received this name because he did such good deeds in his community, most of the time by himself. 
that when he left his community, his good deeds still echoed in his village. So the elders of my Pawnee tribe, they gave him the name Echo Hawk. So I wear my family's crest, the hawk, over my heart, in honor of my family and my mother. And my clan mother, Melanie, I wear the wolf to represent, to tell people I am Lachibu of Metlakatla, Alaska. I wear a hawk on my right dance legging to honor my Echo Hawk family, to honor my Pawnee mother. I wear a wolf on my left legging to honor my Simpsian mother, Melanie Guthrie. So every step that I take, every time I dance, I'm doing it for them. And they guide me. Every step I take in life is to do, to make them proud. So it's very important when I put these leggings on, when I put this regalia on, that I do my best to make my mothers and my family proud. And I have the ancestors on my headband because our ancestors give us strength. Our ancestors lived a life of storytelling, lived a life of passing on our values, lived a life of connection. And through our stories, and there are so many stories of Raven, through these stories of Raven, and you all are going to hear many more storytellers come here and tell stories of Raven. And listen, just as, just as good, just as hard. Because these stories will connect us, teach us. And that's just the first half, to, to learn and listen. Once you learn them, tell them. Tell them. Tell them to the people in your family. Tell them to the land. And to practice your, practice your story, tell it to your dog or cat. The more times you tell the story, the more times you tell the story of Raven, the better you will get at it. And it's okay if we make mistakes. All mistakes are fine, because we learn from them. So whenever I put this regalia on, I know I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm going to learn from them. And every step I take, are my Sian, mother Melanie, Pawnee mother, Clara Kohan, to make them proud, to honor my heritage of Hawaiian. And learning these stories of Raven and telling these stories of Raven is a great way that I know that makes them proud. So again, I challenge you all and everyone tuning in and watching online to tell the story. Tell them, say, start your conversation off. I learned the Simpsian story today of Raven and Tide Woman. Sit down and listen. Don't give them the option. It says, do you want to listen? No, no. You're going to sit down, and you're going to learn the story of Raven and Tide Woman. And you're going to get animated. And you're going to talk about a double gumboot sandwich. And you're going to tell it better than I have ever told it. Because each one of you all are storytellers. Make it. Make it a good one. Joyce, isn't thank you. I was thinking of your uh, uh, seafood and how it makes me so uh, hungry and thinking of, of my ancestors. So it's just like, oh wow, you know, really, really fantastic. And I got so caught up in. And in your story, I, I got a bit lost. And what, how did Raven um, trick Tide Woman, be, like pretending to be full? full or? Yeah, Raven pretended to be full. He went and filled his tummy up with water. And he oh. sat next to her and said, Oh, I'm so full from all these clams and cockles. Mmm, so good. I think I was, I was thinking about the berries because I had, I, before I came here, I had, a, I had a giant blueberry smoothie. I was like, we got to get the blueberries out of the freezer to make room again for more. 
<laughs> so, so, yeah. I was just full of, full of berries, and I thought, oh, what a, what a fantastic story. Thank you so much. Oh. Any other questions? I have a question. I was just wondering about sort of your process and your experience while you're telling a story, because part of what I find so amazing about um, the oral traditions is the fact that they have to be composed live. Um, and so I was wondering, are you visualizing imagery that you're describing, or do you kind of have the cadence of the words you're going to use memorized? Um, how, does, how does that process work for you? What has helped me tremendously was one of my mentors, uh, you take a band, told me when you're telling the story, you have to be the end. You have to be the character. When I'm being, when I'm In my mind, I'm trying to put myself there. And I'm looking down at the tide line. And I'm so fortunate to have grown up in a community in Metlakatla where I walk on a tide line weekly with my sons and my people and my family. So I could see the shells, I could see the minks, I could see the berry bushes, I could see the sea lion with the octopus in his mouth. I could see the gumbos. And I take my life experiences that I have put them in the story. But in order for me to do that, I have to become each character that I'm talking about. I can't tell the story, so when you're telling a story, stand up, get your hand me. Don't sit there and be like, Raven, he was hungry. <laughs> no, no. Think about how delicious the gumboot is. <laughs> And just bring a smile to our face. Put yourself there. Truly put yourself there. And if you, are, and if you do not know how that feeling is, go connect with the forest. Go connect with the land. Go connect with, go hear how the tide line sounds when it comes up and goes out. Go down to the shoreline when it's high tide. Go back to that same shoreline when it's low tide. The smells, the visuals. Put yourself there. Become every single character that you're telling. I truly believe that's how these stories have always been told. 10,000 plus years. And we have a responsibility, again, to learn these stories. And that's only half of it. The other half is to also tell them. Put yourself there. Visualize that. Come. When my family is um, cooking or teaching me uh, a cooking recipe, and when my family is teaching me a, a cooking recipe, it's always always ends with, and that don't forget if you if you make a mistake, you get to eat it. <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. yeah, thank you. We have one final question, maybe? If not, maybe we can give Johan a round of applause for that great story. So as I close out, I want to share a song that comes from my village. A song was gifted to me from, a, from, from my wife, Milgram Zumpty. Thunder Dancer. He is one of the most amazing dancers in our village. Some people love to drum. Some people love to sing. Milgram something he loved to dance. He gifted the song to everybody at our potlatch when he received his name. And the song is Smile Always. Remind us to smile. The laughter is medicine. Do that on a daily basis. Because us as adults, young people are always watching. 
I see not everybody smile in this room. Like, oh my Lord, continue that. Thank you, Johan, and I'll just announce that um, next week on Tuesday the 16th, we're going to be featuring Fred White, who's a Clinkett, a fantastic Clinkett storyteller, and we can thank Johan for kicking off this lecture series with that story and everything that he contextualized it with. Oh, excellent. Thank you for the invite. Good, that's good. Yeah. That's always a that's always a fun story to tell.